Hello, welcome. This is Dina, and we've just done the Daily Dharma, and we're here to do an ancestral read. I was going to leave out all of the cards from the Daily Dharma, and I got into a second recording, and I wasn't feeling it. it I was feeling that I needed to just restart and fold everything back into their decks and start out with a different layout because the ancestors had a full hour to speak on the previous message and that doorway was closed. So we're going to get into some ancestral messages and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some of these cards here between the this mixed deck of Kuan Yin and Kali oracle cards here. I'm going to use these to represent some of the ancestral individuals that want to come through with messages and then we're going to get clarifier cards for each individual energy that's speaking through. Now, not every single one of these ancestral forces or energies will resonate with yourself, but you may still get messages through the ancestors that are not you that you aren't aware if there's somebody you can't put a name or a face to the energy that is being described what i'm saying is that the messages from someone else's ancestor may still serve to help you to understand someone else or a different part of your journey so let's just start by calling in any any forces of the light that you would like to speak to at this time or to call through and I will call in all unconditionally loving beings, God, universe, source, spirit, elementals, angels, archangels, ancestors, all ancestors, for the highest possible good of all any galactic influences that have some speech to put into the situation here. Okay. And again, ancestors, ancestors. I think I'm going to get five piles. One more. Let me get some cards out here. There we go, last one. Okay. Okay, interesting. Saw this guy. So the first one is Tai Chi Rising. The second one, Veil of Shadows. Third one is Kali Mahamaya. Fourth, Moksha of Kali. And the fifth one, Oh, the 38 and the 39 are next to each other here. Karma of Kali. And under the deck here, Nectar of the Lotus, number 20. So as a standalone, Nectar of the Lotus says that we're ascending the throne in, of our own self-care. It's being able to discern what has something to offer and what is just exhausting and going to spend our resources and energies. So knowing where where to put our energies. So Tai Chi Rising is about the ascending vibration. So as your vibration 
changes. Oh, and Joyful Muse in the bottom of this deck, and when I shuffled these cards, they have Delight on the bottom. So, actually, maybe I'm going to get into the code cards first while I talk about these cards. Tai Chi Rising, when your energy level rises and when your vibrational level starts rising and ascending to joy or delight, incidentally, uh, the actual speed of the light that is coursing through your cells and through your muscles and, and your mind and your creative centers and your self-worth centers, the light is moving faster, it's repairing faster, it's activating more cellular growth, more cellular repair. And so Tai Chi Rising is probably somebody who, whether or not you saw this individual as somebody who cared um, or who uh, was a spiritual or religious figure, it was somebody who was possibly aloof, a little bit different, a little bit hard to read, maybe mysterious, some priestess energy here, but somebody who worked very hard to keep themselves thinking positively, changing the way that they looked at things, pulling themselves out of negative situations and looking to some sort of higher guidance or higher ethic to lead them through. Somebody who is very self-directed and self-protected and may have spent a lot of time either single or, or in communion with spirit, possibly. This may have been somebody who meditated, but I'm sensing that for most people, this card is somebody who was experiencing their rising vibration through honoring the body and the comforts versus putting themselves in social situations that might have been more taxing because they were different. They spent time alone, soothing, and aligning with what made them happy. First code card popping out there, Conception. The frequency of conception invites us to bring our consciousness to our origin, the place where everything in creation begins. It helps us to remember the infinite potential and possibilities of this space in what we can manifest through our own focused awareness and intention. So this is like the 16 conception card is like when the dust settles after things have been difficult we're pushed back into the center of self to repair. So this may have been somebody, um, a parent or a parent figure that was very soothing and whether or not we always saw eye to eye, it was a point of our origin, somebody who was aware of our roots and that, that participated in our, or our origin story from our childhood. And this person wants us to remember that we are part of the infinite creativity of this universe shining through, doing amazing things, expanding our potential, witnessing possibilities. And they want us to continue to expand beyond our previously imposed limitations or like maybe even moving on from a job or a home or a relationship that they have witnessed hasn't made us as happy as it could have. And they want you to continue to align yourself, to continue to recognize and honor what brings you peace and clarity and to move in that direction without hesitation, without apology, and to focus your awareness and intention on that development, self-development of, of harmony and love and delight and joy. 
So anything else? Integration under the deck. So I feel, I keep feeling as if this is a mother figure specifically, like especially with conception. Um, and for some of you, this may even be, my condolences again, if this is your story, but this may be um, a child of yours that was either stillborn or unborn or a child that died when they were quite young. So there's something here about not allowing ourselves to, to stop creating and to encourage us to move through the grief cycle and continue to, to dance and to honor our beauty and our love and to treat ourselves with that utmost respect here. And the next card coming out was 12, Change, um, Tai Chi Rising. The frequency of change supports our ability to gracefully dance with the forever changing nature of our reality, both inward and outward, so that we can appreciate the sweet release of the old and the birth of the new. Conception and change with the birth of the new. Yeah, so if you are someone who has dreams of having a family or expanding your family as well, you're being told not to give up hope. And even if you may see that this comes through a different form, like for some of you, maybe adoption or fostering or through, let's say, becoming an aunt or a pet mom, because there are options. Um, to gracefully dance with the forever changing nature of our reality, as my nose is itching, uh, yes, it's to release something that was built upon in the past and embrace this change to change the job or change the partnership or change our approach or I feel most importantly to change our vibrational resonance from grief and depression, shame or or fear based, fear of it happening again or fear that it wasn't meant to be and into that faith and hope and rising our vibration into show me how I can be of service and if this is something that I truly still want show me how I can accomplish this through through some type of a means show me my path and my destiny so all right ancestors show us one more card about conceiving of a change to rise our vibration out of sadness, despair, or suffering into, into next. Okay, I'm being told this is where I'm to change decks. Under the deck here is Gaia, Mother Gaia. The frequency of Gaia reminds us that we're infinitely connected to one another, just as we are to our Great Mother and to the universe that birthed us all. So a mother card here, and it's kind of telling me that even if our mother is in spirit, or even if our, our baby is in spirit, our child, our loved one, that their support is surrounding us at all times, and that they remain connected to us, honoring our path, and helping us to see the, the guideposts to change directions without hesitation when it's shown to us. So in the shamanic blend of decks, I got a few popping out. Face up, we had 58, vanishing near, ego sublimation. So there's something here about fear of failure I'm seeing or... What is this vanishing mirror? We were talking about the social identity and this nurturing figure, this Tai Chi rising ancestor. 
I feel like the message is that we have allowed, or we were a critical player in their life to help them to raise their vibration through self-acceptance and unconditional love. This person wasn't able to do everything correctly in their lifetime, and neither are we, because we're here to screw up a little bit and to dance and to make it part of the dance. And so ego sublimation, for some of you, this may have come through the caring for someone at end of life and the, the witnessing of this person passing may have critically changed our perception of reality, our perception of ourselves, and may have been a turning point in our destiny. Um, I was just watching a What If Marvel episode last night. It was the Doctor Strange one, if you know that one. Um, and it's talking about an un... A fixed point on the time continuum that can't be changed and even if you were to go back and change it or to change one of the things that you did that played into it something else would have gone wrong because the activation that came through that loss or that rejection or whatever it was was a critical point in activating those that were left living Death is a deliverance, it's not an ending. And that's what we're being told with this great mother, the universe birthed us all, the conception of the universe, that we are timeless, that we were put here with these other individuals and that we will go another go round with them. Uh, and I don't know, sometimes I feel like maybe I shouldn't necessarily be um, attached to the concept of reincarnation but I feel like the soul is timeless and that my personal belief is that all these timelines are um, happening concurrently so even though in our present reality this person isn't embodied do we have embodiment over here too with change oh no it's through the um, Anyways, anyways, I'm feeling that embodiment. It's like um, we're, we're maybe living these lives in our dream state, in our meditative state, in our communication with, um, with ourself in any way or with nature. And others are doing the same thing. There's this timeless quality of that intentionality that is put into the ethers and it is omnipresent it's always there and it's it continues that that desire that spoken emotion is always there being dynamic and shifting and changing the way that we conceive of our next moves and our next future and that critical turning point on the timeline has created something that they're told there's no there's no basis for fear or guilt or shame in any of your actions in this that this wasn't somewhat inevitable even if it wasn't in that moment death is always inevitable but death is the life cycle it's not about the death cycle it's about the life and evolution cycle cycle of all the collective, of all of reality, of all of the cosmic forces that that are working through us. So what upside down? Oh. <laughs> so we have repairing the veil, 45, forgiveness, 64, the witness. I just love that card. Can you see what's in the hand in the, the lighted palm here? We had lighted palms in the earlier messages. Uh, it's an eye. It could be eye of Horus or eye of Ra. And then the other hand has a different type of a symbol. 
so it's very interesting. So this may have been somebody with an energy of deer, elk, or some type of stag, because I'm seeing the horns on the head. Um, and in the last card, 26, the hummingbird. And if you've caught any of the episodes where this has come out, this is actually a card that I use as a depiction of my mother who passed away in 2020. So <clears throat> it's interesting. I tried to do another one of these, or a, the first ancestral message that I tried to pull for the collective came through and it seemed like it was way too much of a personal message because I was seeing all my ancestors. And so I was trying to do this very much with without my energy in it, but some of you may feel that these are similar situations to what you have dealt with. So there's something, the ego sublimation, it's like you two or there was something about the process of the life and the death cycle of the two of you co-mingled. It's like the I'm seeing this as the kundalini rising somewhat and the ties that bind the different types of personalities through life and death and beyond and these ties are so energetic to see all the frequencies binding them together and the experiences. It's like the um and then there's a needle and thread in the foreground here and a butterfly. Yeah, for self-forgiveness, forgiveness of others, and witnessing the necessity of that happening helps you to save the world in a way, like that Doctor Strange episode. It's like if you had not had that situation, would you have pushed into these the further extremities of your power, your magic, your strength and resilience and and would you or would you have continued to feel that this individual was always going to be there, that nothing could break them down and that it was impossible that they could so-called leave you. Um, Yeah, like an untimely passing. But this individual is coming through telling us that you need to forgive the universe for for taking this attachment because the attachment is the only thing that is being challenged. The individual is omnipresent. And in my situation, I, in many ways, feel more connected to my mother in her passing than I did when we were in third dimensional conversation. Uh, but it was all perception, it was all clouded. And so as I forgive the third dimension for confusing the situation, as I forgive the mood swings and the, the accumulated rights and wrongs and um, like the mother child dilemma, especially mother to daughter and father to son in many cases. The same sex parental figure can be charged with so much judgment of, well, I needed something different and you didn't do that. But are you appreciating the things that they did for you for better or for worse? Those things that they did do um, are the choices and the consequences that then allow us to to change the cycle that has been operating through the the lineage through the ancestral lines and in that ego sublimation that possibly happened near the end and through the grief process through now and going forward this individual has been transformed and uh, has transcended their physicality their 
their earthly limitations and has ascended themselves somewhat and I see hummingbirds now that I've moved I was in a certain situation when my mother passed had her helped her cared for her in that home and then shortly after her passing all of a sudden everything was aligned and we moved homes and now at the new home I've seen three hummingbirds here and one in her driveway after she passed so I don't want to make this about me but it's like the universe will show you things so some of my friends see cardinals and they feel that that's a messenger of their loved one some others might see something else and in fact with that hummingbird card I'll also pull you okay um, I'll look at those. Okay. Spider and B. Anyways, I want to pull you a, an animal totem card as well for animals to potentially look for, even in pictures if, like, say, you're in Midwest America and you see zebra or something, or tarantula. Those aren't in your areas, but you can take those as, you know, spider or something else. Okay, I have several popping out. Frog is under the deck. Make sure you're hydrating and um, if it rains, maybe take a walk in the rain. It can be soothing. And a couple more. Okay. You have snake protecting the sacred matrix of um, your own soul connection with them. I'm seeing you, I'm seeing a little bit of stagnancy here where you're retracing steps again, this eating its tail versus spiraling up, a little bit going around while you're trying to shed your skin and move into this next place, coming out of the darkness and becoming illuminated and aware of your illuminated self again. And then we see that same illumination coming through oyster which the oyster makes the pearl. So through compression, trauma, and friction, and through old residue that comes in, old toxic irritants are alchemized and turned into spiritual pearls of wisdom. And the snake is also a symbol of wisdom. And lastly, we have this stingray. And look at the chakras there being called out. And I'm seeing the diamond formation here because I was thinking of diamond code activation when I was talking about the pearl, which happens through stress and trauma, the transformation that happens from that. And so through this, there is an activation, and there's something else here about, definitely about water, because we have Frog, oyster, and stingray are all water elements. And then we have snake as earth element. So I don't know if you're a water sign or if this person had water or heavy water in their chart or even absence of water being called to get into your watery depths and to either allow yourself the emotional fluctuation or emotional tears to wash away yesterday. And so this witness card, lastly, I'm finding a couple messages here. This may be somebody new entering your life that is able to, it's like the this vacuum that's created with this feeling of grief and loss of one individual has allowed an opening for a new individual to come into your life. We've seen a lot of uh, cards depicting new people in our lives. And I'm also seeing you witnessing the passing and your changing self in a new way through this. So I'm going to leave that one there for a minute. 
And let's move on to this Veil of Shadows. So Veil of Shadows is somebody who, opposite of this Tai Chi rising, is somebody who remained in the darkness. And even though they may have retreated from society, it wasn't to pursue their joy and to change their life. It was perhaps in a point of stagnancy, an illusion, addiction, and it may have been more religious, organized religion, dogma, and praying for, for forgiveness. This person may have passed feeling that they were going to be harshly judged, and they may have lived their lives feeling like it was somehow of a lost cause. They may have felt betrayed, like people in their life were stolen or taken away from them too soon. And that I'm, I'm feeling, and we can only talk about our own situations coming through the cards, I'm feeling this potentially to be somebody who was an influencer upon the life of the first individual here, this mothering influence dealing with this veil of shadows individual and that's possibly why they and maybe that's the conception card with the first grouping is that person has been dealing with possibly mother issues for most of their was dealing with them most of their life and then was able to activate yourself in a different way or their child in a different way than was in their own life. So okay, back to Veil of Shadows as we have our first popping out. Passion 34. Oh, and the Veil of Shadows is 43. Let's look at this card one more time. So 43 and 34 are transposed numbers. And that's a seven and a seven. The frequency of passion reminds us that beneath every intense emotion lies the hidden gem of insight, balance, and calm. It assists us in finding the balance within this intensity, moving us from chaos to the calm of its core, where we can let its long-lasting wisdom fill us up. So I'm feeling this as spiritual passion, like a missions trip or somebody who is active in their, in their, um, it doesn't have to be a church. It can be some calling or like somebody who is a doctor or a nurse that felt very compelled to go and save other individuals, but then in their pursuit of their passion, when they got home at night may have been depleted and unable to care for the those that were in the home in the way that others would have preferred in more of that compassionate heart based way it came through more in the passion and the fiery intensity so intensity calls to mind judgment and um dismissal and in asking others to change for what makes us angry maybe this person had anger or resentment or bitterness towards somebody else in their in their life and internalized it at some point here under the deck is earth here we had Gaia come out with with the other one let's get just a couple more so tell us more about this passion Okay, we'll take that out. Sacral chakra. So the frequency of sacral chakra, the orange flower of life, supports our ability to flow with our desires and stimulates our creative power to manifest success and abundance in our life. So this also may have been somebody with passion and sacral chakra that took a lot of action in their life, even if that was just their early life they were probably acting out of a situation where they had an intense emotional 
upbringing and they were trying to gather some sort of self-worth from pursuing something meaningful and helpful for others under that tantric journey very interesting so whether you know it or not this may have been a way for this individual to channel very intense sensual or sexual passions as well because with tantric passion and sacral this is very much the uh, desires of the flesh and this person in veil of shadows being an addict or something else see how they're pointing down at the ground it's like i see you devil or lower nature and i'm gonna sit here on my throne um and deal with those but it's so muddy and murky and dark behind them it's like they never felt that they had surpassed this lesson and so they they channeled things channeled their passions into something physical is what i'm feeling here to feel some sort of self-worth the frequency of tantric journey helps us to unlock the hidden knowledge and wisdom that we intrinsically hold about how to reach a state of wholeness and completion through our sensual experiences with ourselves and with another so this person seems to be telling us you know life is fleeting and I channeled my passions in a specific way, but there's more to passion than just than just accumulation and materialization of things. There's it's something that about allowing ourselves to experience sensual pleasures. And this person, I feel isolated themselves. And the situation I'm thinking of, this individual, their spouse passed on quite early before the retirement age. And so this individual in the card was sort of left behind and never remarried, thought it was their duty to hold this passion and made commitments when when some challenging situation came up they made a, a pact with god they were a religious figure that made a pact with god to the rest of their life to never eat meat on fridays which is like a, a catholic lent thing so they're telling you life is short and don't let your passions pass you by don't shut down your heart and your and your root and sacral chakra desires and needs because as humans um, there are needs and wants uh, and some people will believe that that is their highest destiny to be celibate or or practicing um, renunciation of flesh or whatever you want to call it but this individual if this is resonating with you is encouraging you to not become lost with judgments and believing that passion is is dirty or to be morally judged and i'm hearing another message for any of you that have um well, those that may be having different types of passionate impulses that are still safe and, and legal, such as, you know, those that are same-sex partners or those that are living their life with open relationships or um, whatever somebody else might desire, this this ancestor is instructing you that that may be part of your particular exploration and it may not be something that you stay with and it may be something that that opens you up but the contemplation and giving yourself permission to explore what you are really wanting in the situation what would 
what would be your passion if you were to live a life of passionate purpose what would that look like and what steps could you take today to maybe not make it happen tomorrow but to walk in that destiny every day and to do one little thing every day to help yourself to unlock that joyful news i love that this did come out that's the 33 and passion is 34 so joyful news inspiration what would you do to follow your passion it may be something you haven't given yourself permission to do in a long time maybe you played an instrument that just isn't cool like once upon a time i played the clarinet they don't call for too many clarinet solos in modern rock and roll so I don't play my clarinet anymore. This is showing a violin um, and a painter's palette. And there's a chain on the paintbrush that hasn't really spoken to me too much in the past, but maybe you're feeling chained to obligations and um, this is a way for you to break out of the logical aspect of yourself and into the creative source that pure inspiration and healing might speak through your paintbrush or through your instrument with more healing and more clarity and more more emotional dynamism than it can speak through the words that you express dances on one foot you may be a dancer balancing act so yeah balancing your time between your passions and your responsibilities and not allowing any type of a responsibility to the collective or to um, deceased loved ones to eclipse your happiness your loved one wants you to be happy and they want you to Dedicate your life to something more meaningful than the death process, but to uplift this into the pursuit of love, the pursuit of joy, the pursuit of passion. And if you choose never to take another lover, or if you choose to do one thing or another, those passions they're encouraging you to channel your passions through something, either movement or creativity based. I just got a whole bunch of them popping out. I'd like to just look at these and pop them back in. There's the rainbow card that came out earlier. It's like a parrot. And as it's flying through the sky, it's leaving behind a rainbow in its wake. The joy and inspiration that you leave behind you in your wake is palpable winter's dream gestation period so you may have had ideals that you were going to do something in the winter and didn't get a chance because you were in a period of recovery and rest and recuperation but this was a divine alchemy alchemy happening um so with this gestation period there's something going on here where they're saying you now have the healing in place where they want you to get back to your gifts. Dances on one foot fell out. Drifter experiencing life as it comes. So I'm seeing you kind of caged into some bars uh, of your own creating. And they want you to just be mindful that periodically you need to take a break for joy, play, humor, and to maybe find another individual that you can express equally between the two of you where you're at and how you're feeling and then we have another 34 card ancestral wisdom lay of the land yes from their vantage point on the top of this mountain they they're encouraging you to continue to climb to continue to have ambition <clears throat> and then the wind look at the happiness on that individual and the antlers showing up again on the feminine here and is that a 
falcon. I think it is. So the wind to me is talking about fleeting opportunities, um, fleeting time. You can spend every waking minute doing chores or working or, oh, I should do this, I should do that. Or you can allow the flow of things to move through you and say, I'm really tired. Right now, I know I need to do things, but let me just put these down on a piece of paper and allow myself to take 10, 30 minutes to meditate or to, <clears throat> to sit in the wind or to cleanse and clear my energies or to honor the ancestors and just ask them to, to speak with me, through me, to me about the activation of my passions. And then we have clarity and organization with a tidy house. <clears throat> so this one's coming through with um, an urge to stay busy, but ultimately our, you're still not accomplishing the objective. It's like the 33 card here, this joyful muse, is being eclipsed or squeezed out by the urge of this community and the needs of those in our own house or adult children for some of you, um, jobs or obligations, going visiting to somebody else. But the busyness, the chores are yeah, it's um, creating a blockage, I want to say, to expressing the creative self. You're worth more than just work and chores, right? Under the deck, oh, interesting. The Time Master, Saturn is still retrograde right now and putting a lot of pressure <clears throat> upon... Uh, the nodes, at the very least, they're not quite at an exact degree, but the nodes being that the lower path versus the higher. This tidy house is another addiction, another distraction. That's the word I wanted to come up with, distraction. And this person is saying, if you must clean your house, make it a work of art. Make it, you know... <clears throat> if you've got all this junk, don't put it in a box in the corner. Put it someplace. Make it do something. Put it into some type of order. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's just a box. Time Master is talking about time is fleeting. The time is now. We've been waiting for a sign, waiting for the healing cycle, but the, the locks are clicking. The tumblers in the in the locks set are clicking and the key is in our hand and the closer we get to to our creativity the closer we are to our destiny and joy is our destiny and they're saying that this tantric journey is if it's not with another it's with our higher self with our creative persona and time master is saying it's time for you to explore these things it's part of your destiny and it potentially can even make you a lot of prosperity, success, fame, fortune, whatever, if you use your time and space wisely and balance it and make time and space for those things to become part of your world. So let's get you some animal totem cards as well. We already saw the cat, the falcon, and um, that deer, stag, elk energy there. All right, just one for you. The spider popping out for you. So spiders can be gooey gooey to some of some of the collective, but spiders are actually not dark and disgusting energetically. They are the the weavers of the web. And the web we Oh, it's so it's so many different things at once. Oh, and under the deck elk. Saw that one coming, right? So spiders, weavers of the web, it's uh, being able to capture the prey that we need, the opportunities that we need. Prey predator seems kind of aggressive, 
but the spider captures by resonance, by entrapment, by magnetism, it sits and waits. And when something hits its web in a specific one of the threads or silks versus another, I've heard that it it emits a different frequency sound and the spider knows exactly the location based on the sound of that vibrational string. Oh, right? The strings being activated. And what about M theory? Uh, I'll leave that one there. If you're looking at string theory, interesting, you can look that up. So the ability to capture the right opportunities and um, things passing our way, as well as not letting things slip through our fingertips without noticing them, like the fleeting nature of time. And so the spider is a little bit more of an aspect of dharma than not. And so elk here, elk, look at that eclipse depicted back there, that red burning sun moon energy, and then the burning antlers. It's though as though the channel is turned on here and the passion is coming through and we're recognizing it and and listening to it and ready to go. But we had been waiting for something, but I think it's for the time and space to do it. But I'm, it looks like we're being told that time is what we make of it. And it's time to make the time for ourselves because it's part of our health, part of our self care and part of our destiny and part of our prosperity. So the third pile, this is a long one. We have her here, Kali Mahamaya. For me, this to me seems like Maya is illusion. And you see her emerging from the depths of the watery abyss. And she's almost pushing and displacing the lotus closest to her breast there. And Kali is always quite aggressive in her depictions but in this one she's shown with a lot more introspection I don't know if this individual has a prominent marking on their face I'm thinking that this is part of the of the nose ring there with the chain to the ear but it looks as though it's a mole underneath the right eye or maybe even something on the on the forehead even though this is shown as the third eye and they may have been somebody who wore their hair long and parted down the middle or maybe this is yourself but I'm seeing this person as starting out one way and overcoming that and emerging like this person I feel was waking up to their power potential and authority in this lifetime through previous submission or domination or control okay I'm seeing who this represents in my own life that'll help me to convey some messages for you guys this may have been a recovering addict I was hearing before I made the connection with my own individual circumstance. And this person may never have been able to see through the shame of being unable to separate themselves from that addiction fully. And this may have been somebody who ended up succumbing or overdosing some type of a way. So let's get some code cards for this. What does this individual wish to tell us about the illusion 
of shame. I'm feeling a lot when I said that, as if that was very important for one of you. 55. Solar plexus chakra, that's why I was talking about that. See that yellow in the background? I have to get back to this individual. So, um, okay, the three cards that came out, alchemy, consciousness, and Merkaba. And I feel like these are so incredible. So this person, I feel like, was on a pathway of enlightenment and waking up. And see that consciousness, that blue, okay, I can't grab them all, I guess. See the consciousness and the blueness of this individual emerging up from the Maya. The, the veil is the surface of the water. So below the surface, things become clouded and distorted as if when you look through the surface of the water from above or below, the things on the opposite side are, are weird. And so this individual, I'm feeling the ego sublimation card, like when they looked into the mirror, all they saw was this murky, distorted image here. And even though they were surrounded by evidence of their wisdom and, and their path and their resilience, they still may not have been able to emerge fully from their... So the frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all of the multidimensional aspects that show up so that we can include them in our reality. And alchemy and Merkaba. I want to do Merkaba second. Merkaba is the field that surrounds. And so this individual uh, was here to, to overcome something that they felt had control over them and to expand their consciousness and expand their influence and then the Merkaba represents the field of of ourself, the auric shield, the auric field and based on how we can alchemize within ourselves that either resolves the tension in the field and helps us to expand further or it can complicate and kind of truncate things from moving in clean and clear lines and it creates a tension and a restriction and constriction and implosive energy. So Merkaba, the frequency of Merkaba supports our ability to use our consciousness to traverse into other layers of reality and dimensions. It activates our access to our Akashic inheritance as well, merging the totality of our experiences into our present to serve our highest purpose. So I'm seeing this as this individual had a lot of impact. They had a lot of charisma. Um, and this individual I'm thinking of had an, a beautiful voice, a beautiful voice, body, mind, and spirit, and was just never able to see through their beauty. And, um, and in all of the situations where I saw individuals that ended up being um, eclipsed by their own addictions, it was, it was a failure to understand their beauty and their impact and their value and their authority and their ability to kick it once and for all. And consciousness is the 17 card, which is 1 plus 7 is 8. Alchemy is 8. So the conscious alchemy of self-image is so crucial and critical to getting out of addictive habits. And there we have Gaia again. Gaia and Earth keep coming through. Um, yeah, there's alchemy. Okay, let me read this one. The frequency of alchemy activates our magical ability and the remembrance of the magic that we all hold inside. Each one of us has the potential to access the ancient knowledge that allowed the true alchemist to perform the miracles of transmutation. And it's the transmutation of the, of the illusion of 
dirtiness that we're that we are shameful or dirty right and the alchemy is the ability to see through the projection and the control and power dynamics that others tried to play and to reclaim all that we are because we matter enough we we uh, value ourselves enough to kick the habit because no one else can value us enough to get away from that that cycle that crisis and addiction can come into so many forms negative thinking gaming uh, substances eating tv youtube addiction into our healing process or to talking about what everybody has done wrong to us but We've all had one thing go right in our lives. And if that one thing is enough that we can just focus on that one person, that one thing, and then we can try to do our best to emulate and be that person for one other person, for ourselves, first and foremost, to show up for ourselves once and for all. This is beautiful. If you are that individual, this dynamic is is um, asking you to recognize your spiritual authority and your spiritual team on the other side of the veil and they're they're pulling for you they're pulling on you they're challenging you even through the hardships to witness yourself and to instead of saying why do bad things happen it's like Look at me, and no matter what happens, I always land on my feet. And when I land on my back, I get back on my feet. Just like that Captain America, I could do this all day. He won't stay down. And even when he's hurt, he's he'll just keep getting back up and keep getting back up. And um, you're being supported, you're being embraced, and you're being asked to just sit in some type of either bright light or to place yourself in the white light of source or that Christ consciousness, whatever it is for yourself here with this 11 card, 11 is coming back into the self and illuminating the sovereignty of source and within the self and to illuminate that light body and to ask every day that you are given the strength and the resilience to to see through and to see your potentials and your positives and and every impact that you make and to choose based on the consequences and your path and purpose to constantly choose to reach out and ask for help when you are a danger to yourself to not say that that won't make anything easier it will hurt many other individuals and people care about you. People care about who and what and how you are. And there are people that were in my life that I never talked to after the time I was maybe five years old. And then I later on found out that this individual had lost their battle and through theirs was um, using substances intentionally to, to complete suicide. Um, and there are so many people that I hear from year after year that are saying, oh, and I still remember blah, 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 and not like, what a shame, because now that they're gone, I wish that we were friends, or blah, blah. It was that person just, they were always hurt. They were so hurt inside, and nobody could seem to reach them because they weren't staying inside themselves they weren't embracing themselves in the light of source and jesus christ energy is all about sacrifice but also about rising again it's the dark night of the soul and then arising on that third day after that time of repair and renewal and conjuring a new beginning. We have the drum card coming out first here. Um, something about music, it still may be prominent, but marching to the beat of your own drum, it's not about acceptance from others, it's about acceptance from yourself. 
and it's about witnessing the power that you have. You may have a booming voice or a beautiful voice yourself that that strikes a chord with other individuals. And maybe the reason people are staring at you isn't because something's wrong. It's because you are magnetic and gorgeous and beautiful. The hollow bone teachability. I love this one. It hasn't come out on camera yet to my knowledge. Hollow bone teachability. It's like there's no brain in the head. There's no air to blow the horn. But the wind that blows through the world can sound the horn for us. What is that supposed to mean? And we've got a lot of antlers. So this too, what is that, caribou or something with those thick, I don't know, something from like the Canadian world, eh? It's about not knowing too much. We had that with the Tao Te Ching messages from the Daily Dharma. It's that somebody who thinks they know is lost in their ego and somebody who allows themselves to not know is in the place of openness and receptivity for the council, the spirit guides, guardians, ancestors to come through and show you. So there's something that you believe to be true about yourself or about the way that others view you that is a misgiving it's completely false and if you were to see yourselves with fresh eyes you would understand that you are that divine in body teachability so you may wish to speak to a very supportive friend or loved one or a therapist or or even youtubers that are providing therapy but be careful who you reach out to and the type of information that comes through if they're if their messages are clear and consistent and loving then that's generally messages from spirit if it's talking about all the things that you need to do then that's possibly not quite right. It's something about being able to empty out your knowing about a situation so that you can be enlightened with the real truth. Straddling Worlds is the last card from this deck. Wandering Between Realms. He's sitting upon, I feel it looks like Venus or Mercury, in reaching towards another planet here. And maybe it's the moon and earth. I don't know. Maybe you have some bipolar tendencies and have been self-medicating or dealing with medications. Um, there's something that needs to be communicated here. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Your soul is timeless, and if you're dealing with a lot of hardship, um, those hardships are here so that you can be taught something, but you're missing the message because you've, you've allowed uh, some type of accumulated idea to take up resonance in your mind. I feel like there's a lot of anxiety and self-doubt and that you see yourself as either gaunt or or somewhat of some kind of like demon or horned god or some like 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 you're seeing yourself like the body dysmorphia or dysmorphia in general about seeing something that doesn't exist like in the daily dharma we had somebody that needed to put on weight or was unhealthy um maybe somebody that has taken up something that feels instantly gratifying instead of nutrition. There's something that needs to be shown to you here. And under the deck, the two that are popping out here 
are the lower world and closing door completion. So if you're deciding now to enter recovery or if you have been closing the door on an addiction or a negative thought pattern or if somebody has recently left their their body for spirit realms it's looking as though they've completed a soul task of walking in the lower world and that even though we may judge them harshly for walking in that lower world there was a path there there was a purpose there for a reason and they accumulated a bunch of insight and if there is a coming back or if there is guidance from the other side this person has accomplished an enormous feat of being able to walk through that hardship and to come out as they were. Now I do see that this 59 should be wailing tree and under that is confidence in your magic but look at that person stuck within that burning tree there and then behind that is um, Oops, I put those on backwards. Seven is soul contract covenant, and below that, dust devil moving out of stagnation. So this one, addictions and shame. We're being told quite blind, blankly to to come into our own and to stop denying our beauty and stop showing everybody our worst side and if you need help to reach out I'm seeing shark so addictions are often not because we just fall into them because we're lazy or because of or because of some type of um, indulgence that isn't what addiction is if you are looking into addiction I absolutely also recommend Gabor Mate, it's G-A-B-O-R-M-A-T-E, I believe. Anyways, he deals with with addiction in a different way than you'll see other people deal with it. But his main goal is that not everyone who has been wounded or had suffering in their life becomes an addict, but every addict has some type of wounding or suffering that they're attempting to alleviate the pain of. So to get to the bottom of your own issues or to resolve your fear or, or issues with releasing someone who has succumbed to that, asking yourself and, and those that are around this situation, what was it that this person was feeling that they were being preyed upon by this control or power and if we're feeling powerless against our addictions, what are we trying to soothe? What are we trying to to feel better about? There's loneliness, there's lack of acceptance and bonding and I want to impress upon you that even though it seems impossible to solve those things ourselves it's not it's using our alchemy and our consciousness to overcome false self beliefs with the way that that our guides and our ancestors want us to see ourselves in all our divinity and our beauty yes and hyena under the deck. This may have been a dark Hayoka empath. There's um, this cackling humor like, oh, well, I'm just this anyway, so ha 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 Well, well, I'm just this anyway, so I'll just light up another one. Ha 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 ha. Well, you know, I'm feeling lonely and indulgent, and rather than calling a good friend and telling them exactly what I'm dealing with, I'm going to go ahead and um, fall back into this or watch something that will dissociate me from my pain and escape it from a little while even if it's TV or something good bad and different 
music is somewhat positive if you're on the brink of something just barely tipping into some depression but by the time it gets to the point of chronic addiction there needs to be some self-intervention of reaching out and expressing that to somebody else and not continuing to tell people um, the worst of yourself but to actually look at what is right and true and honest about yourself so if you're hiding an addiction too it needs to be brought out into the light of day this may also be somebody who's struggling with some bipolar or manic depressive because of that half and half moon shown up there all right onward to the fourth card this is moksha of kali this flower is just like the flowers that we see emerging from the maya of this addictive individual here who has reached a conclusion something enormous has been cultivated in this ancestor's psyche that is they're reaching across to to reach you to help you to conjure a better way and so here we have the moksha of kali this 39 card um, coming out showing us this blooming of enlightenment and it seems like somebody is really looking at maybe some what are they called um not mudra the yantras the yantras or the um sacred geometry mandalas or the flower of life fruit of life those type of depictions sacred geometry or those type of things where they're imbued with some type of an activation code and that's also why I absolutely love this deck here because of the codes that come through and so this flower is is somebody well there's a pattern recognition happening in this individual this may be a masculine who was a bit of either an artist or a gardener or or just really appreciated art music or something like that or had a um, a real what do I want to say a soft spot for the divine feminine and may have fought against that softness for their masculinity but ultimately they had a lot of passion in their own life and they may have been somebody who is highly romantic because I saw immediately the 39 is the 39 is the code card for the romantic love card in the code card decks in fact let's see what comes out so I, I feel that this is a masculine possibly or somebody that was more comfortable in their logical masculine sense of self but then was here almost in romance with the feminine aspects and was in a period of surrender and softening and becoming more gentle in their life okay interesting so 13 coherence this card is 13 is the death card in the major arcana tarot and it one plus three is four which is emperor so a masculine who may have had a what do I want to say a um, close call with death may have had um, may have been a, a soldier or military in a war or um, hard streets type life something like that where they had to harden up at an early age but then ultimately the realization as they pushed into that high heightened masculinity that their softness was right on the other side of that coin and maybe that harsh life was seeing other individuals in either I'm like hearing gangs or wars or something like that where 
loved ones that had chosen that hard life actually lost their lives and this individual bloomed and create it, it was their activation coming through that and it softened them up coherence is understanding heart mind clarity with yes okay frequency of coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for an optimal ability to create the re reality that we desire so moving into that romanticized um, beauty and being able to through the hard harshness and the suffering of life to then become one who sees the artistry of life and that's part of their healing journey and then maybe their legacy that they left for others is an appreciation for this beauty so this realization card I feel like this is the turning point in their life the frequency of realization supports the internal process of becoming aware of our heart-centered truth, as well as the external process of becoming our highest expression in this world. And so the early idea was that they would harden, but then through these alchemical situations, the realization kind of busted the bloom open, and the blooming happened with the softening cycle under the deck transition. So maybe this even may have happened at the end of their life. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing a situation, incidentally, okay, I'll speak on this. A friend of mine, their son died because he had gotten into the wrong groups and was in the wrong place at the wrong time, was apparently speaking speaking out or something, and somebody literally came up behind this individual and shot him in the back of the head, which is, I'm sorry to convey this, but this, I'm seeing this for a reason, like coherence with that death card throwback and realization is like the realization that comes through like you know the dramatization of somebody who goes through that near-death experience or the death experience where their life flashes before their eyes I feel like the realization for themselves was in some of the wasted experiences and wasted uh, pursuits of their life and and the impact that was now going to happen to their loved ones and that they could never take that back. I know that's difficult for some people. This is a heavy, intense reading, and I, I understand. And I, I, I can't believe it, but that, that incident did happen on my birthday, which was crazy, and I didn't know that at the time. And my birthday also coincides with Columbine, which was the, the first major publicized school shooting in in the u.s as i remember and it also coincides with adolf hitler's birthday which is so interesting it's reminding me of like ley lines in the earth where those charged ley lines are very intense situations and intense happenings going on so maybe something in your life happened on april 20th in some year or um, in April of 2020, perhaps. So, transition supports the deep understanding of the ever-changing nature of existence and of our lives so that we can learn to let go, surrender to the process, and allow transition to occur with ease and grace. So the family also having their own realizations through this individual. So was this individual an artist in addition to those things? Were they, an artist can be many things. It can be like somebody who's a rapper, right? A lot of times they're called artists. 
It's going to take me a second to reach those cards, guys. Oh, I hope you are appreciating this long message. Oh, I've made a big mess here. I hope I don't bump the camera. So based on the number of cards, I'm not going to be able to give a full reading on every single one, but I'll just read them and show them. Heart Home, Compassion, The Corn. There's all these little gremlin faces in there. It's like Children of the Corn. It's a weird one for me. Lost in Space, Needing Direction. And corn is like that too, like a corn maze. Lost in the corn. And Overflow, Overwhelm and Plenty. I'm feeling that this grouping of cards is showing me somebody that they had plenty of uh, opportunities, but they they let something overwhelm them, and they became lost and directionless instead of coming home to their heart and to their probably their family. Maybe they were estranged from their family. Um, and then over here, this small pile. Falling angel, spiritual narcolepsy. So, yeah. Um, and then thunder, like this was seen coming. And like they, I'm feeling this addiction story carrying on to this one, but in a different circumstance. Uh, thunder is like the, the rumblings that happened before that. Like we know when we're hanging out with the wrong people. We know when we should clean up, but um, it still happens. And then the ghost dance. I feel like there's something that somebody can't let go of, or like they were leading a half-life lost in, in the fog and unable to come out of it to use their choices with more wisdom. And then over here, this is an awfully big stack. And we have a couple that flipped. So we have the many masks, the authentic self versus the puppeteer. May have been somebody with a more domineering parental base that rebelled and got out of hand and was very sad and showed a brave face and tried to harden up. The journey was very difficult and hard. And I'm seeing this as a throwback to this reading here, see this council. Somebody wants to embrace this individual and um, there's something here about the way that these individuals have impacted yourself. And we have this one coming upside down, stranger, curiosity. And how I said at the beginning, this was somebody that I didn't I was, I was acquainted with, but I hadn't spoken to in years. It was the, the parent that I was friends with. And, and the, the individual's face may help you to also see somebody that you recognize in these depictions. I'm seeing that this one looks like indigenous, native, uh, some sort. And then we do have, this one looks more Asian and... Um, There, somebody who puts on that brave, socially acceptable face versus this one seems to be somebody who's more either curious, leaning in, or challenged. And then we have the magic in reverse card. See, this individual also looks like somebody that I know. And then we have eye of the needle, intentionality. And then the moon in reverse, they may have had a mother figure that wasn't around. And also, even though I'm calling out masculinity, this absolutely can be the mother card. Somebody who was addicted to being seen in a specific way or was kind of never around or was super moody or um, had their own psychosis that affected yourself. And I'm seeing bird feathers in the background as well. And there's something else about the grid of the circles here. 
like a labyrinth. Yeah, it's, uh, may have been an absent mother or an addicted mother um, who could have been an artist or, yeah, it could have been much different. And then here's Taming the Wind. So there's somebody here that um, thought that they could, that they could, um, that they were in charge, they were in control of something until they weren't. Um, but then we're seeing Earth Keeper, an unmarked trail, Revelation. And with Revelation, and we have the realization here in Coherence, it's like, like this person that we were talking about with this sad journey and that ultimately got into the wrong place at the wrong time and may have been murdered or in a war or in some type of gang crossfire or something. It may not have been something that they even, maybe they were getting out of it. Maybe they were cleaning up their act or something like that because there's this intentionality here and thinking that that they were just doing their best and that they could tame the wild forces but there's this earth keeper seems like it seems like um the elementals and the flow and the karma and dharma that follows that crisis point and follows all of the families of the one who pulled the trigger, so to speak, and the one who lost their life, and all of those left behind that are struggling to come to resolution on that. The Earth Keeper energy tells me about the way that we can hold space for each other and the timing and the time and space that was created out of chaos and senseless violence that then all of the people touched by that are changed in a critical way and the message continues to be exponential where if that person hadn't been so to speak sacrificed their trail would have never been marked. It, the revelation wouldn't have been made that the resurrection wouldn't have maybe occurred. And so whatever it was, it was somebody that was on some type of a path and ended up falling asleep rather than coming back home to their heart space and got lost in the shuffle and it created an enormous overflow, probably even many people involved in this situation were then called in and affected by this. And I can see the overflowing um, community involvement and maybe families of affected victims and affected others coming together for mutual support. There's something about community activation here and the, then the legacy may not be physical art or something of that sort. It may be the realization and the coherence that comes about addictions or about lost souls or about something of that sort. So under the deck, magician, sword, and confidence in your magic. So if you've been touched by this, maybe it's in your destiny to gather in a group or to contribute to some type of a website or to be um, an intervention counselor, if that's not too much for you. And I, after I had a situation that affected me personally with a suicide, that happened and I was the individual that that discovered this. Through that situation, one of the things that I did that was very healing and proactive and positive and helped me to activate more of my healing potential was I went and I volunteered my time at a local 
organization that you may have heard of, especially if you're local. The Ellie's Place of Lansing Group is a healing center for grieving children and their families. And I was able to be um, a moderator in a group, a facilitator, they called it, where I was working with three, or, three to seven-year-olds predominantly, and a little bit their family, but their families all went to other groups. They were split by age groups and all of those things. So some of these things can be some of the hardest things that we may choose to do for our healing, but some of the hardest things are the most meaningful and impactful, and they create, they honor the legacy of the individual that has passed. Even when we might have bitterness and blame for that individual, it helps us to resolve what we can do from the ashes. Ash to ash, dust to dust. Uh, Say a little prayer for those that left us too soon. All right, you all, this is a heavy one, isn't it? I'm remembering so many individuals that, that have come through, and more so than what I've talked about. Will the wisp and the circle came out. There are many individuals pushing through the veil to be spoken about. Um, I'll say one other, one other situation that keeps knocking on my door, my brain door. Uh, in my local town, there was also a tragedy that happened between a couple that were married. They were married, both went to high school together, married, had two children. And if you just saw them from the outside, they were all somewhat popular individuals and had many things going for them, but from what I understand, the the masculine was somewhat unstable and somewhat abusive. Now, I am not going to demonize that. I feel that people are like that because they have something that needs to be dealt with. If you're in a situation like that, my first and foremost if I dare to give advice, is to get yourself out of the situation to safety, you and your children. Because, as we all know, the worst can happen. The best can happen. But if you stay, it's going to be more of the same, and it will escalate. It, people don't stop being the way that they are. And when you're in a situation like that, the two of you or three of you or a group of you are in a codependent abusive relationship with each other that is not there to be love and light. It's there to be shadow and, and divine push to get out of the situation. In the situation I'm thinking of, it ultimately started moving where she left the husband and she said it was the happiest time of her life, if I recall. She did not say that to me personally. Some of this is hearsay. But then, in an attempt to get back together and to soothe, they went on a date, had drinks, and at the end of the night, who knows what happened, but ultimately, whether it was an accident or planned in advance, no one will ever possibly know or maybe they do know and didn't let outside the family know. However, the husband apparently did shoot the wife and then himself, leaving the two children, who were mostly grown, to fend for themselves. It's a tragedy. And even if you would put yourself in harm's way, notice the children and the other individuals that are... Um, also victims of that and get yourself to safety. So we're being told in this situation to to help ourselves to become some type of a healer or to heal ourselves in a new and powerful way and to not let that person's memory be one of sadness and shame or loss or regret but one that 
brought people together. That's how we honor the soul of a restless individual. It's one of the ways. The last card, my dears. Thank you so much if you've listened to the whole message here. I know this is an intense one. Kama of Kali. I'm sensing that this is somebody who... There's something about the red of the palm. It may have been somebody who worked too much, like working their hands to the bone, I'm feeling, to pro produce something perhaps of value or of beauty, um, beauty for others. I don't know, like seamstress, or like I'm feeling like a sweatshop. It may be somebody from before modern times or from a, a different country. I know that there are many immigrants in my country here and in others that still send money back to their relatives in other countries because the situations in other countries are, are like that. You cannot make a living. It's basically slave trading in other countries in some ways. It's like human trafficking if you feel like like in some Asian place, ah, geez, is it Japan where there's certain, or is it China? It must be China. I apologize that I'm not as worldly as I, as I wish, but there are sweatshops in, I think it's China, where they literally have jump nets below the windows and bars on the windows to hold people in because people are slave to their job and they don't want that. So there's something coming in about not allowing this to happen, to escape control and slavery in some type of a way. Now this, in America, very often we have the slave trade of the distant past that's called up well, distant. How distant really is it when your ancestors are still dealing with things like, I mean, you can believe anything you want to believe, and I'm not trying to fall to one political camp or another, but it's a literal fact that there are more minorities locked up, more minorities targeted, more minorities shot rather with a kill shot than a warning shot. And there are more individuals fearful to the point that they would take those actions based on assumptions instead of seeing a person. And there's other cultures that have, in other countries that have the same type of minority, the predisposed guilt of the minority and this stuff it's still ongoing I still I have some nephews that are mixed and they moved to this tiny little town where my family was raised and it didn't take very long for different individuals to throw racial slurs at them when they were just driving down the road or standing there breathing air. Cultures are broken and most of the people that will tune in and hear me are not going to be the individuals that do that. But it's not all about race, it's not all about culture, it's about also judging the racist, judging the misogynist, judging whoever. There's something here that is being called out Let's see, we got solar plexus came out again here. It's the core of that flower, that brilliant yellow lotus center. Transition again and healing. It's time to take action to advocate for the things that we believe in fully and to be more outspoken about the common root between all of us and to stand up for the underserved, if that's what we're called to do, 
and there's something here also about that working to the bone and scarcity and money and the perpetuation of of poverty so yeah they may have let's say um, emancipated the slave trade but then decades and generations and maybe a century later you still have similar depictions of that same exact situation coming through in our culture is rooted on tradition the culture is indistinguishable from its shadow and light and if we ignore either then we're in denial so there's there's this transition of healing and so these individuals that were emancipated how were they supposed to live except off the land and how are they supposed to get fair trades when they didn't have resources they were just thrown out into the forest if you will and um, I'm just using this as a symbol this is for all of us genderless raceless cultureless that have been born into that work 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 no play no resources you can't make it on what you're doing and so there's this stifled root in an inability to see how to how to increase or to expand our holdings how to overcome the socioeconomic status of our parents how to become more educated than our parents vision quest is under the deck right here and I'm seeing the red and the yellow that comes out with the root and the solar plexus here. So, and I'm, I was realizing while I was talking, I didn't pull any animal cards on the, the previous pile. We'll get back to that. Let's complete this one. And then we're going to go back through. And each one of these stacks, I'll just read you the um, ancestral wisdom out of the deck. First one, deep diver, diving into a task. And root girl, root, disown self. So this always seems to me the child who um, is a product of their environment. And I'd say for better or for worse, but it's mostly the inner child still has this extreme poverty, this extreme judgment, this extreme disowned from society, or is there a place for me? I feel, I feel like there's this, the hair here, um, not on camera, the hair here almost seems like the, um, ethnic hair, the textured hair that is left in its natural and wild state. And some people, I, oh, this just hurt me in my gut. When I was working with some young children with, I don't even want to say the name because it's all protected, but in this, um, institutional type of approach where you take a monthly stipend or a salaried stipend that is below the poverty threshold and then you serve versus work for some type of an objective that's been pre-approved and grant funded from the government to the institution that you're serving with you're placed in an institutional position where you might work for financial knowledge in one place and another you might work for uh, food security and in another place you might work with um, um, gardens community gardens or something like that and what I'm feeling with this is when I worked with some of these children I remember some of the kids 
would be embarrassed when their hair wasn't done in their braids or if they hadn't gotten the time or money to go and get it done. And their parents were completely mortified if the kids left the house and their hair might be like, let's say, in a ponytail and then it's like like this. But not ev not everybody finds that unattractive. As the only white girl I have the permission and authority to speak for, I find ethnic hair amazing and beautiful and gorgeous. And yeah, it can be a hot mess. I'm sure it's a pain to take care of, but there's beauty in your natural state. There is beauty. So many emotions coming up in slow movement. It's like um, from an early age being taught and told, well, don't you dare walk out looking like yourself. You need to compete or compare yourself to to what to me i mean what's is this hair amazing no it's a hot mess too that's why i stuck it up here because it's frizzy and it's humid and it doesn't do anything and so i stick it in a bun so i don't have to worry about it but i'm feeling that this root girl being the disowned self it's like we were taught to judge ourselves harshly we were taught to be ashamed of our natural state we were taught to have women wear makeup and to wear push-up bras and to um, saunter when you wanted to be looked at, to be objectified. Um, and then through the process of diving deep into the task of social niceties and whatever else, it's like we encounter the self and we want to be seen and loved for all that we are. And those jellyfish surrounding us could very much execute us, ele electrify us. What is that? Not execute, Electri electrocute. But it's, it's absolutely no accident that I said it like that. I mean, there's real ramifications for being born a certain way and so this ancestral wisdom seems to be telling us that although all of those things are true um everybody has blood on their hands in some type of a way and i'm hearing how many of us that were controlled and dominated we go out into the world and we are committed to dominate and control somebody else to prove to them that I've made it because now I'm a dictator. Now I'm the powerful one. Now I get to control and I get to say, and if you don't do what I say, I'll walk away or whatever else. And so this wisdom is saying that even though everybody has blood on their hands, so so do we in our continuing to believe that we have to play a role instead of just becoming our beauty because the judges are still going to be judgmental, but then there are so many people in their beauty and in their acceptance that aren't out there screaming. The what, it might be 5% of the population or it might be 20% of the population that is racist and you could even say that it's more than half if you go with everybody in the world and all the different ethnicities somebody is prejudiced against someone else and so we all have our preconceived notions about like oh well that guy at the store said this or that because I'm a woman and, and and the mechanic explained it to that way to me because they thought that I was an idiot or something like that. It's in the stories that you tell yourself versus if you consider every day I see things getting better. Every day I walk more into my truth. Every day I get straighter and clearer and more aligned with my beauty, my grace, and all of the the things that I'm here to accomplish and to put out into this world. I have nothing to prove, but every day when I walk out of this house, being 
in my love, in my light, instead of in my hate, in my pain and bitterness, in my control and power dynamics, every day I go out there and I shoot my arrow as straight as I can and all that comes back to me is love. Under the deck, Root Girl shows herself again. So I will let those marinate. Let's get your totem first before moving backwards in time to our previous. What is it for this individual I'm seeing with this? Something about slavery, racism, socioeconomic um, status. Ooh, beautiful, under the deck, dragon. Dragon energy is power. It's um, dragon's horde, it's protective, and it keeps, it keeps that watchful eye for those that would come to try to steal our, our blessings or steal our abundance or resources or our grace or our power from us or to steal our beauty or our self-worth. And sometimes those that would give us a so-called reality check, even our inner saboteur might come out and say, well, you know, this person's out to steal from me only because we're afraid of that. False evidence appearing real. And then it comes out with golden egg, gorgeous. So golden egg is, it's this beautiful nest depicting the heart chakra and the dragon card is also a spirit element and dragon is is the solar plexus chakra again so we have two solar plexus chakras and it's taking that the fear of oppression the fear of um of judgment or control or power games and it's putting them through the heart to stand fully in our power, not to feel that we have to prove anything, but to every day inspire and to lead a life that serves our heart and the hearts of all those that surround us. Oh, there's a little pile here, but look at that gorgeous little baby lamb. The sacrificial lamb, the first thing I heard was the lamb of God. Um, I'm not one who practices organized religions, but I consider myself a recovering Catholic where they talk about the Lamb of God. And it's the sacrificial inner child that no matter how good we try to do, there are those that would try to make us the scapegoat. But we don't need to throw ourselves up on the cross every day. We don't need to be a martyr in our lives. We don't need to be hard. We don't need to, to be any type of a way. We don't need to be a victim or to act as though we're a victim in somebody else's drama any longer. We get this mother bear energy as well here. Like we, we come in to protect ours and our children and to stand up against others that are coming in and trying to to give the impression that those few and weak and miserable and unhealed individuals have the audacity to speak for me? No, never. And allow yourself to see the beauty in those that would never, ever. We don't know other individuals. Lizard, this lizard seems to be advice to bask in this in the sun to come out into the light of day to get fired up when we need to but to not be cold-hearted against others or to see all others as cold-hearted against us so again look for those animal totems even in depictions and art those type of things now let's get back real quick into the energy of the previous this overflow, overwhelm, and plenty, this realization of the activation that this individual has left behind, the legacy of another is evident in our own. 
Oh, dolphin, that's gorgeous. And I'm feeling a heart expansion right now. Dolphin is such a cute and beautiful, high-minded individual. It's a high vibrational, playful, joyful creature. They have a high expanded vocabulary and are great communicators amongst their pod or their tribe. They're surrounded by all this beautiful energy. And if I still had that delight card up, I would show it to you, but it's all yellows and pinks and whites. And so this is telling me that even through this sadness and overwhelm, there is an immense amount of joy that is able to be shared and activated within others. And then the black egg here is the throat chakra and the ability to communicate through darkness to create the light in the dark and to light a candle in the darkness. So yes, yeah, some very powerful changes and shifts here for everyone. I do want to go back through and just real quickly read each one of the descriptions for you guys from your ancestors. And then I'll get just a quick um, oracle card to lighten the mood. So Tai Chi Rising 32. This grouping, your ancestor is telling you that your energy field is growing stronger with more spiritual electricity pulsing through your being. Take time to nourish your nervous system as it adjusts and be gentle with yourself as you adjust to increasing levels of spiritual potency, which gives more impact to your words, actions, and thoughts. So you come into a situation unknowing of your power and, and the inspiration and the enormity of your presence. And so others take notice of you, and so you may misread that. But you're being told having a big energy field does not necessarily mean that you have a high level of consciousness. But when you do have an exquisite awareness and a beautiful life, it's able to shine more brightly through a larger energy field. Whatever you have within you, a, a larger energy field will reveal it with greater gusto. Second card, actually I told you I was going to get just a quick closer for each one of these. Tai Chi Rising, what is the message for those of us with the rising energy field, dealing with some changes in our lives? We'll take that one. Whenever conferring with another, either face to face or across the miles, whether a human being departed spirit or a sentient tree always speak to the highest within them. It makes such a difference. Amen. The universe. P.S. Yeah. As if some of the trees weren't sentient. Glad you caught that. See me in their eyes. And this is the card that was actually sitting on top of the deck while I, when I picked it up. And we already had those messages coming out for them. So if you've ever been suddenly found and been loved by somebody amazing, awesome, fun, and fantastic, chances are astronomical you will again. And if you haven't yet found such a person, chances are astronomical you will. Up to you, the universe. When a thing hurts your eyes, stop looking at it. When it hurts your ears, stop listening to it. And when it hurts your heart, stop justifying it. I love you so much, the universe. Second group. The ancestor that was uh, sort of lost in their darkness and in their um, in their suffering, I'll say. That's 43. 43, Veil of Shadows. A lotus blossoms with deep, rich mud into which she plunges her roots and draws great nourishment. From this mud, made of water and earth, growth happens and great beauty is revealed. Your soul lotus thrives through depth of emotion and aliveness of your body into which she can plant herself and unfold as a lotus of light. Didn't we talk about that with passion, sacral, and tantric? It's about getting into your body. And 
I just want to read just a little bit more here. Where is the part? It needs a, possibly to consider growing. Your soul will need a, a little bit more mud, more lessons, more challenge, more water, and more earth energy so that it can grow and shine. So in the spiritual world, all things serve. Everything, including our darker emotions and the parts of our body that we may not think are acceptable. They're actually good nourishment for our soul. The soul craves to love and be in love and be in love with all parts of you. Like a passionate divine lover, it wants to hold nothing back and become completely spiritually intimate with all aspects and all parts of you, whether you have thought they were lovable or not. There's more, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah, don't waste your time. Time is of the essence. Life is fleeting, and you only have so long in this body to explore your passions. And if you focus on what could go wrong or your fear or those relationships or things that didn't work out, the pain of loss and death, then there's no end to suffering. But life isn't made for suffering. It's made for alchemy. All right, what else from the ancestors? What notes? Dwell on what you love. There's no one in your life who hasn't always loved you. They're all just learning how to show it. Those big sillies. And I didn't actually have any pop out, so I'll get you just... I got a yeehaw. So things are about to get really juicy, maybe. And do you know what you've created? No, besides an intergalactically known saunter named after you, inspiration in the eyes that have watched you, hope in the minds that have admired you, and love in the hearts that have known you. But you might ease up on your sachet before someone gets hurt. Not bad, kiddo. Not bad at all. The universe. And then I have create space for new love. When a thing hurts your eyes, stop looking at it. When it hurts your ears, stop listening. And when it hurts your heart, stop justifying. So both people get that. The third card, third grouping. Kali Mahamaya. Our individual who may have either been an overdose or a completed suicide, potentially, not necessarily. Take your messages. If as you will. Kali Mahamaya is Kali Ma, the spiritual truth behind all appearances, the healing waiting to be discovered in all experiences. In harmony with your higher self, she manifests the path upon which you can best learn, heal, and grow. She is unclothed, symbolizing wild, unconditioned authenticity. She is the empowerment to discard conditioning and judgments that we have worn. Cast off the fearful constraints others have imposed upon you. Connecting to your authentic being will attract healing, guidance, and divine grace to you now. So, it's talking about the, the activations of of everything that serves and sometimes it's not love and light that is the most effective and efficient to activate so the life circumstances that will best evoke the sacred fulfillment are being called to now from gentle blessings to heart stretching challenges that bring out courage and confidence you will never know that you had she weaves these circumstances into being that will cause you to grow awaken and fulfill your divine potential. So it's talking about those life lessons in moving away from leaving the limitations of, in, of excuse me, moving away from limitations in absence of personal responsibility that accompanies mass conditioning and into the inner spiritual epiphanies and realizations moving away from illusion. Beautiful, right? All right. So in this situation, what does this ancestor have to 
tell us. This is a really long one. I hope you guys are able to get something. Hubba hubba. You know that dreamy look of deep soulful love you've seen, sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gazed into your own? Expect a lot more of it. Woohoo, the universe. And look at that sensuality there. Like this self-belief and understanding of your beauty and capacity and power is making you sexy and sensual and whole unto yourself and divinely magnetic. And as you are deep and soulful, it is your birthright to come upon others that are looking for that and will mirror that back to you. Just like that mirrored reflection across the pond here. The older the soul, the softer the glance, the quicker the smile, and the sooner to say, I love you. They also skip and wink more than normal and hold hands with those they walk beside, utterly fearless, the universe. The great thing about feeling deep, profound, earth-shaking love is that you can start with anyone. Next, the universe. And we were talking about toxic situations with the next one, but there's something here about not becoming caught up in the illusion of suffering or somebody else's rejection um, and, and self-medicating those things away instead of living our life. Fourth pile, 39, Moksha of Kali. 39. I do hope you guys will like these. Uh, let me know if this was meaningful. If you'd like me to continue and do a few more of these readings, maybe with a few less ancestors on the table, because I'd like to keep these well below a half an hour. So maybe we'll just do a couple at a time. Uh, her passionate desire for your liberation is unflagging. And so your relief shall come swiftly. She's speaking to you from within. Is she? She is the voice of reassurance. Can you hear her? Trust her? Soon you'll see things in a better light. You're going to be liberated from the struggle you're currently experiencing. Be true to yourself and your path and your life path and you will attract the way forward as obstacles disappear. Do not turn away for you are destined to overcome all opposition, bringing your sacred path to fruition. See, your sacred path, it's an activation, like this sacrificial lamb that came out in the next one, I was feeling with this one because we started talking about sacrifice here. Um, and I'm seeing the distinction between voluntary and involuntary is made because at a high level, certain divine beings will take on the experience of suffering to assist those who are yet to experience moksha. So moksha is a Sanskrit term meaning freedom in the sense of complete self-actualization and spiritual liberation. It refers to the attainment of enlightenment and is considered the final release from involuntary suffering. So this helps others to carry the load and it moves others forward on their path, right? Very incredible how these things come all together at the end. And there's my, my left hand really tingling. So there's a message here that needs to come out. So what is the activation and the movement into our sacred divine destiny? This realization of our path comes through well, that was kind of a lot. You were born with that it quality. There's a deeper reason for each of your questions. Seek it. But some questions are, are not to be answered. It's um, like, why was this necessary? Why did that have to be the thing? Because this person was suffering. They had involuntary suffering and some level of control or some type of earth guardian stepped in to activate mass quantities because there was some type of a soul contract. Old souls use words very sparingly except for I, love, 
thank you, wow, now, and cool. Wow, I love you now, the universe. P.S., which sounds much better than wow, now, I love you. Sequence is important. Keep it simple. So other people really crave your approval, and if we can forgive these individuals and their choices and ourselves and our choices, and just keep it as simple as things happen. We all made our own choices will help us get through. All there is to love has been there all along. When you begin to find love in people and places where you haven't found it before, it's always because you've grown. You so rock the universe. Turn your love light on. Sometimes the best way to remain sane is to love like crazy. Works for me. And then we've already read this one twice. See me in their, in their eyes. Whether, oh, maybe just once. Whether conferring with another face to face or across miles. Whether human being, a departed spirit, or a sentient tree, always speak to the highest within them. So if you're still mad and screaming and bitter inside of yourself, um, they're asking for you to release them from that karmic entanglement. Um, it's a point of release that is difficult, but there's a, a group or a community of, of people sharing that that can help you and you can help them. And then just curious, when was the last time you looked into a mirror and addressed yourself as gorgeous, magnificent, or sublime? It matters. Here's looking at you, gorgeous, the universe. Yes, okay, hubba hubba counts. If you could read all the minds that I read, hear all the prayers that I hear, and beat all of the hearts that I beat, I wonder if you'd even believe how often you're thought of, talked about, and fallen in love with. It's payback time. Andale, andale, the universe. And our last one, Hama Kali, 38. Reminded that we have the 38 and the 39. I'm hoping right up to it. She is completely and utterly in love with your divine essence, and in her love bestows endless gifts. Your path need not one be one of endless effort. Yeah, that working your finger to the bone and having blood on our hands for perpetuating the, the culture of scarcity and not being able to make enough money working for others. Um... Connecting with pleasure as a part, excuse me, as a path of personal empowerment. Yes, the dragon energy and the mother bear. With an intention to bring spiritual benefit to the collective through softening and opening your heart is an act of worshiping the divine feminine. Relax into the presence of what is as you slow your pace and make swifter progress. It's about not wearing ourselves thin and spending our lives in slavery to any concept or role that we play or personal identity or illusion or trying to prove to somebody that we've made it or to perpetuate the dramas of our forefathers and foremothers or oppressors or victims. It's about moving beyond that. Karma is a Sanskrit word that refers to the sweet stuff of life. Remember the nectar of the lotus and knowing where to get that. Oh, there's so many powerful below that. We're not going to pro prolong this message any longer than it needs to be. Pleasure, emotional fulfillment, and being completely present so that we can experience life through all of the senses. So it is also sensuality and physical vibrancy. Without the quality of karma, our experience of life can become dry, bleak, and intimidating, a joyless existence with simply more tasks to be completed. If we're feeling exhausted, lacking in the qualities of delight and lightness of heart, then we've become deficient in karma. Sacred pleasure. In the realm of the goddess, the enjoyment of life is a sacred act of devotion, gratitude, and celebration. Just a little more. In the throes of profound challenge and transformation, we can feel disconnected from our joyfulness. It's as though we're akin to the bright days of summer and we're midwinter, wondering how it ever was that we could frolic about 
in barely anything when we now feel the need to cover ourselves with abundant protective layers. It's to be expected during times of intense suffering when we're dealing with an issue that has elicited grief or anger. Yet if we allow our minds to remain open to the possibilities of joyfulness and pleasure, they can find their way through, like the sun breaking through the clouds to bring us comfort. The oracle can indicate not only a more pleasurable way of being as a part of your future, but also an offering of pleasure. Now, even if you are struggling to ease the strain and make the way easier overall, it requires embodiment, a connection through the senses and the subtle nuances of feeling and beauty. Through embodiment, it's easier to receive healing. It can manifest through the uplifting scent of aromatherapy, the warmth of a shower, gratitude for a safe and comfortable place to sleep, the sumptuousness of warm clothes or, the, or a satisfying meal, the delight of a playful silliness in animals, the nutty sense of humor of a beloved human, the simple appreciation for the flow of the breath, or through the openness of being that spontaneously occurs in response to an expansive vista of trees and mountains. Kama is the spiritual practice of presence that leads us into joy, even ecstasy and bliss. It is the juiciness of feeling truly alive. Don't let others steal your joy. There's more written here. Alana Fairchild did both the Kali and the uh, Kuan Yin deck, and she's very beautiful and gently in her healing words. So that is that one, and let's get you an oracle card and close this bad bee down because we are working on two and a half hours. All right, can we do two, 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 two? <laughs> All right, we'll take this. You have what it takes. Always follow your heart unless it's been broken. Then you must lead it back into love. The universe. P.S. Did you know that hearts are never too big to mend, too small to rebound, or too tired to love again? If ever you've been loved and... If ever you've suddenly found and been loved by someone amazing, awesome, fun, and fantastic, chances are astronomical you will again. And if you haven't yet found such a person, chances are astronomical that you will. And here comes the two, 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 two. Hubba hubba. You got somebody coming in. Keep it simple. Don't borrow any trouble. Old souls use words very sparingly, except for, of course, I love. Thank you. Wow, now, cool. It's talking about appreciating somebody as they are and as they come to you. Wow, I love you right now, as opposed to, wow, now I love you, now that you've done what I wanted. Sometimes the best way to remain sane is to love like crazy. It works for me. Turn on your love light. If you want it, turn on your magnet. When you begin to find love in people and places where you haven't found it before, it's always because you've grown. You so rock the universe. All there is to love has been there all along. I so appreciate you guys being with me and going through these messages together today, walking through this intensity of the healing journey. And let me know, like I started to say before, if you enjoy these readings, um, speak to the highest of your journey. Let me know if you want to see these on a more regular basis, maybe a little bit shorter message. And, you know, like, share, subscribe, and help us to get those messages out to those that need to hear them the most. Thank you so, so much. Take good care of yourself and come back to the points that really made a difference in, in your belief. Make some notes. Write down the things that you are, um, that, you, that really resonated with you. And call in your abundance and prosperity because it's ready for you now so peace love and light to your healing journey i do hope this helps you thank you so much big love Bye. -bye.